Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering epigenetics, histone modification, and a couple specific diseases related to imprinting, prader willi syndrome and Angelman syndrome. This is the fifth video in my genetics section, which has seven total videos. So I suggest you check out some of these after you're done watching this video. You can see here, I give epigenetics a high yield rating of four. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a rating scale from zero to 10, giving you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for the step one exam. And if you'd like to get more details about that rating system, you can head to my website here. Epigenetics is the study of heritable changes that do not affect the actual DNA sequence. The few videos before this in the series talked about genetic changes, and genetic changes are things that can be inherited through the actual change in DNA sequence. In effect, genetics determines what is transcribed, while epigenetics determines how much is transcribed. Epigenetics controls how much of a certain gene we're going to transcribe and how much of the resulting protein is going to end up. Remember that negatively charged DNA is wrapped around positively charged histone proteins like beads on a string when in the nucleus. That helps condense it so we can fit it into our individual cells. The field of epigenetics primarily changes how tightly that DNA is condensed and how tightly it's wrapped around the histone proteins. When DNA is wrapped very tightly around the histones, it's not actively transcribed. It's clumped up so tight that the enzymes that help with transcription don't have enough room to work. Alternatively, when DNA is very loosely packed, it's much easier for the different types of machinery to get in there and transcribe that section of DNA. You can see here on the right, this section of DNA is very tightly packed and that's called heterochromatin, and it is not actively transcribed. It's essentially silent. On the left, you can see that this section of DNA is pretty loosely packed. There's a lot more space in between the different nucleosomes, as well as the actual DNA that's wrapped around the, the nucleosome is going to be looser as well. This euchromatin is transcribed very actively. And it's easy to get these two terms confused. So I have a mnemonic that people from the EU or the European Union tend to be more relaxed and less uptight. I haven't been to Europe, so I wouldn't know this definitively, but at least the Europeans that I've met seem to be pretty relaxed compared to people from the US. So that's how I remember it. EU, euchromatin, European Union. Histone acetylation is one mechanism that epigenetics works through. It adds a more negative charge to the histone, removing the positive charge that it naturally has and neutralizing the charge it has, as well as neutralizing the attraction it has to DNA. This histone acetylation causes uncoiling, relaxation of the structure, and more active translation. Methylation is the other main pathway that epigenetics works through. And you can add methyl groups to DNA or the histones. Either way, a methyl group is hydrophobic, meaning it doesn't like water. So when you add it to something, it causes that structure to bunch up. So if you add a methyl group, DNA or histones around that methyl group will try to surround the methyl group so water doesn't get access to the methyl group. When you're adding methyl groups to either the histone or the DNA, you're obviously going to cause it to clump up and not be actively transcribed. It's going to be silenced. Here's a easy memory mnemonic to remember which one does which, because you might accidentally flip acetylation and methylation in your head. So I think that acetylation, which starts with A, leads to active transcription, also A. And that methylation, M, leads to genes being missing because they're not actively transcribed. Imprinting is when one allele is naturally inactivated or silenced by epigenetic changes and only one allele is expressed. This is only present in a small number of human genes, but it is important to a couple specific diseases. Some of these genes, you're going to automatically have the allele from your mother expressed and the allele from your dad silenced. Some diseases are the other way around. The allele from your dad is going to be expressed and the allele from your mom is silenced. 
The reason this is important to genetic diseases is because if you're automatically silencing one gene, that now means that only one genetic defect can give you that disease. Usually if you have two fully functional alleles, a, a problem with one isn't going to give you the disease because you've still got the other allele to help out. But now you're silencing one and you have damage to the other, so now you've got the disease. The first one of these diseases that's related to imprinting is Prader-Willi syndrome. And this is where you inherit a mutated allele from your father while the inherited allele from your mother is naturally silenced. And the two most commonly mentioned clinical presentations in step one questions is going to be mental retardation and hyperphagia, which is excessive eating. The opposite disease would be Angelman syndrome. And this is where you inherit a mutated allele from your mother while the allele from your father is naturally silenced. This disease classically presents with excessive laughter and happiness, seizures, and mental retardation, just like prader willi syndrome. I have a mnemonic to remember which one is which. I think about an angel being more mother-like and angels being pretty happy people. That lets you know that Angelman syndrome leads to happiness and excessive laughter, and it is due to a maternal mutation. You can also think of Willie being a guy's name. So Willie could be could remind you that Prader Willie is a mutation to the father's allele while the mother's is naturally silenced. You could also just think of the dad eating a lot more than the mom in most cases, so that might remind you that hyperphagia is common with Prader Willie syndrome. That brings us to the end of the video. If you like my videos, please consider making a small one-time donation on my webpage using PayPal or a credit card. Unlike similar study aids that are available for $100 or more, I'm releasing all this stuff completely free. I don't want to leverage students' test anxiety for a profit or contribute to your student debt. However, I also have six figures worth of medical school loans and have spent a nice chunk of change on this website for things like recording equipment, software, and web hosting. I am currently planning on expanding the content and features of Stomp on Step 1, but none of that will be possible if I continue to hemorrhage money like I am now. If everybody watching this video gave like 10 bucks, I'd have enough money to make those improvements to the site without digging any further into my own piggy bank. You probably spend more than that every day on your whipped frappa choco double mintachino with caramel on top. So why don't you give your body a chance to recover from the caffeine overdose and send a few of those bucks my way.